Type 2 Hero by Mad Nimrod Chapter 1 Workless and Broken One voice spoke, another voice growled. The first voice reprimanded, the second voice yelled. The first voice yelled back. You're more like a villain than a hero. Then there was fire. There was pain. And the first voice screamed. Zuku woke up sweating and gasping for air. He lay in bed and regained his bearings. Judging from the fact his mom wasn't bursting into his room, he must not have screamed in his sleep. That was lucky. He didn't want to disturb her again over a stupid dream. Not a dream. After a moment, he felt pain in his left shoulder. He winced and quietly cried as he gripped his left shoulder, his scarred, aching shoulder that was missing an arm. It hurts. Realizing the time, he quickly got up and got dressed. With almost a year's practice behind him, he managed to get dressed in the UA uniform with minimal hassle. Never did get the tie right, though. Looking himself over in the mirror, he quickly wiped his tears before heading down for breakfast. His mother, the sweet woman she was, greeted him with a hug before fixing his tie for him. Zuku gave a bit of a tired chuckle as she did. Zuku and his mom ate breakfast in silence before he grabbed his satchel. It was a bit of a hassle using a shoulder bag, but it was impossible to wear a backpack with only one arm. As he stood up from the table, Inko noticed the pained look on his face. Are you sure you want to go today? She asked. I'm fine with you staying home another day or two. Eh? Mom, today's the first day of school. Izuku laughed through a stutter. I can't miss the first day. Especially if the first day of UA. That'd just be embarrassing. Giving his mom a quick half hug, Izuku dashed out the door. Inko gave a soft sigh as she cleaned up the dishes. Izuku was smiling, but she could tell it was mostly a mask. She teared up a bit. When was the last time you really smiled, Izuku? Izuku walked down the street, taking in the morning air and occasionally moving his satchel a bit. The morning was relatively quiet and devoid of villains, it seemed. No one paid attention to him, and he was careful not to bump into anyone either. He really didn't want to deal with anyone this morning. He was nearing the train station before a red car stopped next to him. Izuku briefly wondered if this was another tourist who needed directions, but was surprised to recognize the driver as they rolled their window down. Yo! Kamui Woods greeted, still in uniform. Kamui! Izuku exclaimed. D -d 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 didn't um, how are you doing? The usual. The hero chuckled, at Izuku stuttering. Heading to UA, right? Want a ride? The thought of riding in a car with a pro hero, especially Kamui Woods, made Izuku turn red from nervousness and flail his arm while speaking complete gibberish. I, I couldn't, he finally replied. I mean, y you're a pro on a d d duty and I'm off the clock, Kamui interrupted before gesturing to the empty passenger seat. Come on, I've been wanting to chat anyways. With no choice but to admit defeat, Izuku went around the car and nervously sat in the passenger seat. Kamui drove towards UA and, thankfully, waited a bit before talking. He mostly asked about how Izuku's daily life had been, how his physical therapy was going, casual things like that. Izuku was glad for that. Nothing about his old school, nothing about the incident. In less time than the train, Kamui pulled up to the gates of UA. As Izuku thanked him and opened the door, the pro hero put his hand on Izuku's shoulder. Listen, kid. UA isn't like your old school. The teachers there will help you if anything happens. 
If anyone hassles you, tell one of them, okay? Izuku just gave a quiet nod before exiting the car and heading inside. Excuse me. Izuku looked up at UA. He had only been here once before for the entrance exam, so the sight of it was still amazing in his eyes. With a small smile, he dashed in to find his class. With the hustle and bustle of the first day, no one really noticed him. He was thankful for that. He didn't want to be judged for his disability on the first day. Giving a sigh of relief, he found his class, quick class quickly. Scooting in quietly, he sneaked past the other students to a desk close to the window, obscuring his left shoulder from sight. Pulling out his notebook, he wrote in it quietly while waiting for the teacher. The wait wasn't long. There was a crack as their teacher smacked the podium to get everyone's attention. Izuku looked up in disbelief. He had heard Yue's teachers were all pro heroes, but seeing it with his own eyes was something else. Though, he did wonder how this teacher got away with their current outfit. Good morning, class! Midnight smiled as the students got to their seats. Welcome to Class 1C, General Education. Chapter 2 Broken Helping And that'll be your class schedule for the year, Minai finished as she closed the folder on the podium. Now, today is technically a half day, but we still got time before you kids can head home, so I'm giving you all permission to explore the school grounds. Stay out of trouble, stay out of the way. And if nothing else, stay out of the principal's office. Good? Good. Dismissed. With that closing word, the students in, of Class 1C got up and shuffled for the door. Izuku lingered a bit longer to finish the current sentence in his notebook. Midnight's orientation to the class took a little more than an hour, but due to everyone paying attention, he didn't get to see too many quirks in use by his classmates. Some were more obvious such as the small boy with mouse ears and a tail. But overall, the kids in his class looked normal enough. Zuka was eager to see, that, see what their quirks were, but too nervous to actually approach any of them to ask. He'd just have to wait for them to be used. Closing his notebook, Izuku slid it into his satchel before getting up and heading for the door. Wait a minute, kid. Midnight called just before he stepped out. Izuku froze. Did he do something wrong? Was he in trouble? It was barely an hour into the first day. What could he... Wait. What if she knew he was quirkless? Was she going to get onto him for that? Was this going to be a repeat of his... His thoughts were interrupted when he felt a pair of hands gently grab his shoulders and spin him around. He looked up into Midnight's scrutinizing gaze, frozen in fear. She watched as he watched as she looked him up and down, and smiled. "You're Inko-san's kid, aren't you?" she asked. Y y "You know my m m mom?" Izuku asked nervously. "Recognize those eyes anywhere?" Midnight smiled bigger. And yeah, I know your mom. We've been friends since I was, since she was a student here. Though we haven't talked in forever. Kind of my fault there. She stopped talking when she saw Zuku's eyes widen. M my mom it's attended UA? Zuku gasped, giving a deeper one when Midnight nodded her affirmation. This was news to the stuttering young man. His mom might not have spoken up a lot about her past, but why wouldn't she talk about attending UA? Knowing her son wanted to go there too. You'll have to ask her the details, Midnight said as she quickly scribbled something onto a small note card before kissing it and giving it to Izuku. Bewildered, he accepted the card and gasped when he saw it had the signature and a phone number along with the lipstick from a kiss. My personal number, kid. Anyone messes with you at all, call me. If anything bigger happens and you can't contact your mom, 
Call me. Okay? She gently ruffled his hair as he nodded, tears in his eyes. Just like that, his first hour at UA had been better than his whole three years at Aldera Junior High. Pocketing the note, he gave a deep bow before leaving the classroom. Midnight gave a smile as he left. Don't worry, Shima-chan. Midnight whispered to herself. I'll help him keep himself safe. Izuku raced down the hall, his hands on his satchel. If he memorized the school map correctly, the sport cur- course workshop w- shouldn't be much further. He had filled out a request form for a certain object not long after receiving his acceptance letter. Due to the non-violent nature of the object, his request was accepted, and he was told it would be ready by the first day of school. He just had to grab it from the workshop himself. He's... Just a sec, y'all. Sorry about that. He just had to grab it from the workshop himself. He smiled as he saw the metal double doors of the work. Boom! Both doors slammed open from a sudden explosion. The shockwave might have knocked Izuku off his feet had he not tensed up the instant he heard the noise. Only a little smoke filled out, but it was followed by a coughing girl with pink hair. Soot covered goggles and cinched clothes. Okay! The girl laughed as she pushed her goggles up, revealing yellow eyes that seemed to have crosshairs in them. Maybe a little too much good juice in that one. Better turn it down for the next test. Then she turned and saw Azuku standing not too far from the door. He had not moved since the explosion occurred. Hey there, little guy! She exclaimed as she hopped over to the shorter greenette. Didn't see you there! I didn't hit you with any... Her words dropped as she noticed he didn't jerk or scoot back when she leaned out her face close to his. Her smile dropped when she saw the look in his eyes. Those weren't the eyes of someone who was startled from a random noise. Those eyes, still focused on the doors, were the eyes of someone frozen in primal terror. Hey, she said in a quieter, calmer calmer tone as she gently tapped his shoulder. Hey, are you alright? The sudden contact on his left shoulder startled him from his stupor. He looked around a moment before his gaze settled on Hatsume. Wiping a few tears from his eyes, he looked up at her with a nervous smile. Sorry, he muttered. I'm fine, really. She gave a frown, clearly not believing his words as her hand gently squeezed his left shoulder. She looked at his shoulder, clearly noticed it was missing something. Izuku winced as she did this, certain she was going to say something about his arm. Instead, her eyes lit up and she looked at him with a bigger smile. You're Midori-kun, right? She asked. The one who requested that desk thing, right? Surprised by the sudden cheerfulness, Izuku only nodded before the girl pulled him close and dragged him towards the workshop. Awesome! I'm Hatsume Mei, and they had me work on it as an extra credit thing after the entrance exam. True, a genius like me doesn't need extra credit, but it was fun to work on. Did you come up with the basic design yourself? Pretty smart, Green Bean. The support student kept jabbering on, not letting Azuku get a word in edgewise, which he was completely fine with. As she pulled him towards a large workbench that was already charred black and had a flaming something on top, Hatsume casually grabbed the burning device and tossed it into a nearby can, eliciting another pop which made Azuku jump, before grabbing a large metal case off the floor and setting it on the bench. She gave a chuckle before flipping the tabs and opening it. Inside was what looked like a few metal bars connecting a polished wood plank to something that looked like a harness. Hatsume pulled it out with ease, gently pushing Izuku back a step before slowly lowering the apparatus onto his shoulders. There were a few curved and padded bars on his shoulders, with the rest of the device resting against his stomach. Despite all the metal, the object was fairly light, a fact the 150cm tall boy was thankful for. After helping him buckle it into place, Hatsume stepped back and let Izuku try it out. At first, the wooden plank was resting against his stomach, 
but Izuku grabbed the corner and spun it clockwise from his perspective until the corner was next to his chin. Then he slowly pushed the plank forward, hearing the gears click as it rotated forward before coming to rest in front of his chest. He rest his right arm on it, noting it seemed a little high before Hatsume tweaked the bars on his shoulders a bit low to lower the wooden plank until it was a comfortable height. Have I mentioned how clever this design is, Mido-chan? Hatsume asked as she stepped back to admire the device. I was a bit curious why you wanted to carry it yourself desk, but after seeing you in person I get it. Now let me show you some of alterations I made myself. She gave a smile as Izuku watched her push a small button on the edge. There was a loud click as a small panel flipped up, revealing a small compartment to close to his wrist. I spot to carry pencils and erasers. It's spring-loaded, so you don't gotta worry about the batteries. You will need batteries for the other side, though. That button flips up a small clock that gives the time, temperature, humidity, and anything you'd need to know for outside writing. Now, I know the place you're actually going to do the writing is slanted and all, but I also took the liberty of adding a little ridge around it so you won't get any books wet if you accidentally spill a drink outside it. It's also made from mahogany and the bars are rust resistant, so... Hatsume stopped when she noticed Izuku was just staring with tears streaming from his eyes. This is... Uh, amazing, he cried. M more than I ever th thought. He quickly wiped his eyes and gave Hatsume a wide smile. Thank you. Hatsume gave a big smile of her own before enthusiastically patting his shoulder. Don't thank me yet, Mido Tan. You can't take this thing off of school grounds yet. Apparently, the principal wants to see it used and possibly have a few more made for future disabled students. But once you can take it outside, be sure to tell folks it was made by the great Hatsume Mei. Got it? Izuku gave a happy nod and Hatsume laughed before pushing him towards the door. See you later, Ram. Don't be shy about coming here. I want to know any more clever ideas you get. And bring that thing back here before you leave for the day. She grinned as she watched Izuku almost skip out of the workshop. Yeah, he was going to be a fun guy to hang with. However... She mentally noted she'd have to tone down any possible explosions when he was around. She could recognize PTSD a mile away, even without her quirk. The half day was almost over, and Izuku had spent the entire time familiarizing himself with the school. He didn't really visit any other places for the second and third year students, but even, the ca even then the campus was large enough it took hours to really look at everything. Something that really surprised Izuku was how there wasn't too many limitations on where students could go. Since UA was a hero school, Izuku assumed there would be places the other courses weren't allowed to visit. But it really seemed like no one cared who went where, other than a few facilities for the hero course. The biggest surprise, however, were the other students. At his old school, Izuku had seen other students get harassed or questioned for not having obvious quirks and he knew those students would bully someone missing a limb like he was. Instead, the other students he had seen here had let him pass without hassle, and it wasn't out of being ignored. Izuku knew what it was like to be ignored. On top of that, a few other students had actually approached to ask if he needed help with anything. It was a stark contrast to his old school. After a while, Izuku went outside, choosing to rest a bit on a small hill overlooking a P.E. field. God, even the grass here felt so comfy. Did one of the teachers have a landscaping quirk? He would not have been surprised if there was one. He leaned back and closed his eyes, enjoying the breeze. Then something hit him in the chest. He jerked up, heart racing as he looked around, finding no one else in the vicinity. Azuka sighed and looked down at what had hit him. It looked like a baseball, but it had some weird stuff attached to it. Maybe the baseball club was doing tryouts? They'd probably want this back. Thinking about how the ball hit him, Izuku picked it up and walked in the direction he hoped it came from. After a few minutes, he reached another part of the field and saw a large group of students about 100 meters away from the hill he'd walked on. 
Even from this distance, he could see none of them had baseball bats. Maybe they weren't the baseball club? Izuku watched them for a few minutes as they all took turns throwing different balls, making Izuku feel a bit silly about bringing back the one that had hit him, and noting they were all using their quirks as a shaggy looking older man watched. Wait a minute. This was a quirk assessment. That meant. You don't care, of course. Izuku gasped, dropping the ball. Quickly sitting down and folding his desk back down, Izuku pulled out a new notebook and started writing. He was too far away to get the finer details of some of the students, but they all had a huge variety of quirks that he could see. He noted one purple haired boy handed a huge guy with a lot of arms the ball to throw, while another girl threw her ball using the vine like hair and. Holy crap, that girl made a cannon? The noise of the cannon made Izuku flinch a bit, but it was thankfully far enough away that he didn't freeze up again. Izuku watched them for around 30 minutes before the assessment came to an end. Izuku was a bit sad by this, as he hadn't been able to get all of their quirks down. He could guess for quite a few, but some of them, like the girl who might have had long earlobes, were too indistinct to figure out. At the end, the man who had to be the teacher said something that made the shorter boy with great black hair cry out. Izuku didn't know what sort of horror that boy was told, but judging from how the boy had just latched onto the cannon girl's leg and appeared to be trying to stuff his face into her butt while flailing around, he didn't feel too bad about it. Soon after, the teacher grabbed the purple midget and carried him away while the other students began the trek back to the main building. Izuku wondered which hero class they were. From what quirks he had figured out, he was sure he could devise a way for some of them to improve themselves. Of course, that was assuming they'd listen to him. Everyone else he'd met today might have been nice to him, but for all Izuku knew, the hero course students might be elitist and not listen to a disabled, quirkless runt like him. Suddenly, the hairs on the back of his neck stood up and Izuku turned around. To his surprise, he saw the shaggy teacher from earlier behind him. Judging from how the man was crouched, he must have been sneaking up on Izuku. And judging from the tweak of his eyebrows, he must have been surprised Izuku noticed him. Izuku, Izuku looked over his appearance once and gasped. Y you're a racer head! He exclaimed, another twitch from the older gentleman. Yes, a racer her head informed. And who are you? Izuku quickly scrambled through his pockets and pulled out his ID, handing it to the pro hero. M Midoriya Izuku, sir. C -c Class 1C. General education, sir. Eraser head looked over the ID, making sure it was legitimate before handing it back to Izuku. Alright, now what are you doing here? The pro hero watched as Izuku slowly and shakily reached down to pick up the ball from earlier, holding it out. This hit me while I was r resting on a hill over there. Izuku explained. I, I, I thought it m might have belonged to a cl club, so I c came to return it. But, but, but saw you in your c class instead. I, I saw you, you were doing a c quirk assessment and d d decided to take notes. Notes? Izuku quickly handed his notebook to Eraserhead, who took it and paged through it slowly. As, it, as he did, his eyes narrowed. Oh god, was he angry? It's a hobby of mine, Eraserhead. Sir? Izuku quickly clarified. I, I like to take notes on heroes and their qu quirks. I, I originally d did it to prep prepare to become a hero myself, but... He subconsciously rubbed his left shoulder and cheered up. A am I in t t trouble, sir? I, I swear, I I'm careful with my n notes, a and I never show them to people and... Kid, breathe. The racer head finally stated. I'm not mad. There's a lot in here, however. How long were you watching us? 30 minutes, sir. The green-haired boy replied after checking the clock on his desk. And what's your quirk? Izuku looked down and cheered up more at this question. I I'm quirkless. 
There was a short, short, awkward silence. You're telling me, the racer had asked, that you're quirkless and managed to figure out this much in only half an hour? A nod from Mizuku as more tears fell. Kid, cheer up. I'm not mad. If anything, I'm honestly impressed. Izuku looked back up at him as he flipped back through the pages. To get so much from such a short observation time from this distance without a quirk, it's damn impressive. He closed the notebook and read the title. Number 15. You have 14 more of these. Kinda? The greenette nervously chuckled. Number 14 d doesn't have much in it yet, but because it's going to be about my classmates. But I got 13 more filled out. I said you could calm down. Racerhead looked at him. No need to stutter. You can't help it. I I've been stuttering since. R Zuku rubbed his shoulder again. The doctor said it it's l linked to, t to trauma. I don't know how long it'll last. There was a few more moments of silence before the pro hero held up the notebook. Mind if I borrow this tonight? And think you could bring the first 13 to school tomorrow? Mizuku's eyes widened before the teacher continued. No, you're not in trouble. Stop thinking you are. I just know a teacher here who might like to see these. He likes brainy kids like you, even if he honestly terrifies half the staff. Y you think he'd want to see my stuff? If anything. The racer had chuckled. He'd feel rather put out if he didn't see this. We won't damage the books at all, and they'll be returned at the end of the day. Sound good? Izuku quickly nodded in reply, and the hero gave a grin. Good. Now get going, kid. Day's almost over. Also, for the record, you can call me Aizawa. Izuku's eyes widened more. Just how wide could those things go? Before nodding and running for the main building. The pro hero watched him go before flipping through the notebook again. Inka was busy setting the table for a late lunch. She knew Izuku would be home any minute and would be needing either comfort food or celebration food. She was praying it was the latter. She didn't know how the staff would treat her son, since quirkless kids weren't allowed at UA when she was attending. Jared Kayamanamuri was a teacher there, but still. I'm home! Izuku called as he stepped into the apartment. Iko turned to greet him, but stopped when she actually saw him. This morning, he was downcast and quiet. When he came home, he had a shine in his eyes and a smile, a genuine smile, on his face. It was such a drastic difference, Inko was almost brought to tears. How was your day, sweetie? She asked. It looks like you had a good one. It, it was amazing, Mom. He beamed as he gave her his trademark half hug. I didn't t talk to too many people, but, but the people I d did talk to were all so nice. N no one harassed me for being quirkless. The, the teacher f for the hero course is the eraser hat. Iko smiled as Suzuku continued to chatter about his say. Just enjoying the honest smile on his face. Just one day, and then UA had changed his mood so much. Maybe it would help him after all. A and my homeroom teacher is Midnight. Uh, also, she s s said she knows you. Inko froze for a moment in surprise before laughing. Oh my, she asked. Good for you both. And yes, I know her. I'll tell you all about it later. How is she as a teacher? Sh she's pretty good. Izuku nervously chuckled as he fist through his pockets. Then again, it it's only the first day. Sh she also gave me her number for, f for an emergency c contact. He held out the card in question and Inko took it. That's good. So long as she didn't kiss it like she does for... Inko stopped when she saw the lipstick on the card. Iz Izuku was confused as Inko kept smiling while the air around her seemed to darken. Before long, she slowly looked toward the door. I'm gonna kill her. What? I'm 
gonna use my cork to rip her. Mom, stop! Izuku comically explained. At the same time, Izuku was trying to keep his mom from killing her old friend for reasons he still did not understand. Azaba was sitting in a particular office. In front of him was the teacher he told Izuku about. That teacher was carefully paging through Izuku's notebook, going over the notes he took on Class 1A. And he took all of this down in 30 minutes? Netsu asked. No quirk either, Azawa nodded. That kid has one of the most analytical minds I've ever seen. I'm honestly looking forward to the other books. Netsu chuckled while sipping tea. Who is this student anyways? Closing the notebook, the principal read the name on the front cover. His face scrunched up a bit at the instant he read the name. Midoriya. Small, green, missing an arm. You're familiar with him? Aizawa asked. His name has crossed my desk a few times in the past. The rat bear thing took another sip before handing the book back to Aizawa. The real question, though, is what you plan on doing if his other notebooks are just as good as this? Nezu was certain of what Aizawa's decision was. If he's as good as we think, Aizawa started, stated, I want to put his name forward to receive Type 2 training. Alright, y'all. Now, I'm still sick, so I know the voices probably aren't, like, the greatest, and I've had to pause a few times to take some extra drinks during this chapter and the ones I'll probably do throughout the rest of the day. But I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment if you haven't already. Uh, I'm open to suggestions and I reply to every comment. So I hope to see you guys down there. With that said, I will see you guys all in my next video. And ciao for now.